I suppose this video is in regards to high vibrational content. Um, you know, I find myself having a lot of times on my hands uh, as a full-time tarot reader. And I fall into the rabbit hole. I fall into the darkness of, you know, watching. I usually are the personality that, you know, formerly is self. You know, we're not our personalities. But before I became, you know, more self-aware and quote-unquote woke to certain energies, you know, when I worked in an office 9 to 5, regular job, I used to watch a lot of comedy podcasts. And I'm noticing within myself that, you know, I get more and more triggered, especially since I'm in a fairly new relationship. And so, you know, I'm at this kind of like quandary of a conundrum, this crossroads of do I keep myself, you know, exposed to these kind of triggering situations or these like forms of entertainment like comedy podcasts which have, you know, which some could get, like, really kind of gritty and dark and, you know, the comedy. And, you know, I find myself thinking that some of it, you know, comes across as just mean-spirited. So I suppose, like, the spiritual or existential kind of, you know, uh, conundrum is can you be, you know, happy, excited, fun? Can you be occupied and entertained in a high vibrational capacity? You know what I'm saying? Like, where's that about? Like, you know, I usually watch, like, Adam Carolla or Kill Tony or, you know, Fighter and the Kid, Brendan Schaub. But it's almost as if, like, you know, they're, to they're toting some sort of, like, unconsciously, you know, their demons and their insecurities. And essentially, if, you're, if you consume that media, you know, you're just kind of exposed to that. But... You know, just waxing philosophy and speaking out loud as to, like, you know, I'm sure there are others out there that are kind of, like, at this point where they're genuinely not concerned, but they're wanting of something that is, like, fruitful. You know, I also watch figures like Muji and, you know, spiritualists, so there's kind of, like, a heavenly side or positive side of the spectrum. Right now, I'm currently listening to kind of like ocean waves on a Caribbean uh, beachside in the background. Um, but you kind of have this kind of spiritual quandary or conundrum of like, what do you do in regards to content? You know, how do you fill your days? I feel like I kind of figured out and solved the 9 to 5 thing by becoming a full-time tarot reader. Um, so that's amazing, you know, grateful and blessed to be able to do that, to be able to use my education and my articulation in a way that helps others and benefits someone other than me. But there is this kind of like crossroads between the low vibrational self and the personality that is Peter Valadez, you know, me, quote unquote, which is used to consuming low vibrational content. And, you know, the personality it is, has been burned by it because, you know, you're sent down rabbit holes and you're sent, you know, for me it's manifested or expressed and like, you know, being triggered in regards to insecurities. And so I might even kind of take, devil card energy coming out interestingly enough, um, I might even take, uh, you know, that insecurity and bring it to my significant other and ask her, like, hey, how do you feel about this, or, you know, have you ever done this, or taken part of this, or what's this, that, and the third, and you're just left with this kind of, like, you know, feeling of, you know, that's not freedom, that's not, like, I could see on one part of the spectrum, also drinking energy drinks here, so... Not to be hypocritical, but... Who's to say what kind of vibration that's at? But point being is, um, you know, yeah, there's like this discussion of, you know, does that test your metal? Does that 
strengthen and fortify your personality? Does that help your bond, you know, with the significant other? Um, that Knight of Wands in reverse, by the way, is an excess of, uh, of energy that needs to be utilized in a healthy way. Um, and I can read, you know, space as being energy as well. Two of cups flashing at the bottom in regards to relationship. But point being is like, you know, inevitably I think maybe our personalities are tested in some way, shape, or form. Is it practical to kind of live in this reality where you're no longer consuming other personalities, especially if they're low vibrational or toxic. So it's now it becomes a question of like, okay, well I get maybe there's this philosophy or ideology of a certain amount of exposure kind of tests you, but, and it maybe it strengthens you and it hardens you and it forces you to figure things out or you know, talk to the significant other or talk to yourself and figure things out and get yourself at a place of like self-soothing or like, you know, Joe Dispenza talks a lot about like the refraction period, the refractory period of like, okay, you've fallen from grace, but how well do you cope and recover after that? You know, so I understand that that's a lot of it, but maybe, you know, I think a lot of it as well is just like, this place where I feel that I'm at in my life, Page of Cups, this is meditation, commune with the divine, the other side behind the veil, um, mystical experiences, um, coming out of uh, options, disillusionment, uh, turning towards the soul path with the soulmate. I think in my life, you know, again, like I said, a lot of time in my hands, incoming communication, could be in regards to stability, financial stability. But it's like, you know, not to say that you fear the void, but I suppose there comes a point where you want to kind of ask yourself, like, you know, is this going anywhere or is this this infinite kind of rabbit hole of being burned? Because sooner or later, it's almost as if, like, well, I could just remove myself from this these personalities or these contents but and that's that and maybe I won't be susceptible to falling down the same rabbit holes of being triggered or being burned you know like at, one, at what point are you learning and growing but uh, and on the other you know end of the spectrum at what point are you putting your hand on a hot stove and you're just like being triggered you know like how close do you have to be with someone you know, what is this kind of perpetual growth versus, like, why can't you just choose heaven here and now and be content and happy and satisfied with it and have that be the kind of frequency that you're putting out there and that be the response that you get in your reality. You know what I'm saying? Like, you wouldn't just keep surrounding yourself with, like, toxic people so why do you keep on consuming toxic content? And I don't know why, but it might be kind of narcissist uh, empath relationship, but I really did kind of take a, take a liking to, you know, all of these comedians. But, and, you know, in a way, like I said, now that I'm in relation and now that it does kind of kick the tires of my insecurity, you know, only now is it kind of coming up as a problem, so to speak, for me, you know. Sun card in the reverse, content, satisfaction, in your comfort zone, in your comfort bubble, on the negative side of the spectrum, I suppose. Uh, but in any event, yeah. Find it. It's it's interesting food for for talk, food for thought. You know, self-admittedly, 
I, I do consume a lot, you know, I'm always having something playing on the background, I'm not the best with just being quiet and just having nothing in the background, so I definitely feel like that speaks more to me than to, you know, I'm not taking shots at any content producers, but, you know, it does kind of have you ask the existential question, or at least, in the very least, the question towards the personality, like, what what is that, you know? I almost feel like in some ways I am like a glutton for pain or punishment, you know? In a weird way, and I think a lot with like Catholicism even, it's like you kind of reward yourself for suffering, you know, which is kind of an oxymoron. And so, you know, in a way, it just becomes, you know, hey, this isn't fun anymore. So, but then if, you know, I did a lot of writing on um, Tumblr just now, which I haven't done for a while. I think it's consciously arriving on Tumblr. So go check that out, all one word, consciously arriving. Um... And I suppose the idea is that, and let me sit down lower so my back is actually comfortable. I suppose the idea is that, pardon my background, um, I suppose the idea is that, you know, A lot of all of this, I think, for me, has to do with kind of being open and vulnerable, you know. Um, I don't know that I have a lot of the kind of like personality programs playing in the background, so to speak, uh, as far as who I am or my self-identification. I did experiment with a, lot, with a lot of hallucinogens and psychedelics in high school, so I think that rewired me in a way where I was kind of more exposed or susceptible or in the knowing to what it is to kind of just be like the void, you know? And so literally, sometimes I find myself, and this is what I was writing about on Tumblr, is that, like, you, you find that, like, you can't even, like, walk outside of your apartment without um, feeling like you know, you're just this open wound exposed to negative energies or psychic energy attacks or, like, I feel so sensitively. And I think a part of that is, I, you know, part of it, I understand it to be, you know, through my writing just now in Tumblr, I came across this kind of understanding of some of it is, you know, how do I self-identify? Do, do I continue to self-identify as sensitive? I feel like that was a stigma that I took upon myself at a young age. But, and maybe kids are sensitive naturally, but I think there's this idea of, you know, telling yourself, you know, I'm, I'm protected, I'm safe, I'm secure, I'm guided. Uh, I was actually looking up synonyms to insecure or, excuse me, sensitive, but that's a form of insecurity, I suppose, on the negative side of the spectrum, you know, and the, excuse me, the antonyms. And so, you know, uh, secure, I suppose, would be a positive antonym to, to sensitive, um, or at least in the healthy form that I would want to kind of embody moving forward. But um, another word was like, insusceptible or unsusceptible and then that made me think of like impenetrable in, impenetrable excuse me I mispronounced that impregnable in, in, impregnable is that a word impregnable impregnable um but uh yeah so I don't know I, I think a lot of it goes back to kind of like self-identification and like even going down like I have this habit where I, I ask my significant other like questions and sometimes it can be a little uncomfortable questions about the past. I realize that that's the present mind creating a threat 
that it tries to understand as the past, but you can never understand the past. You can only just kind of piece together, uh, you know, composites that you just accept as, okay, this is the past, but it's really not. Everything's always the present. You know, even our memories are formulations of, it's all, it's all in the present. There are electrical signals and synapses in the present. So you can't look at the past just like you can't look at the future, you know? So, um, the point being is that, like, you know, I, I, I've been kind of undergoing and undertaking this whole philosophy of, you know, coming to terms with that, uh, in a sense. Like, coming to terms with the fact that just because I ask someone a question about that their, their past, that's it's all patchwork it's not even a reality and then the only reason why I would care enough to ask about someone's past that I'm with in a committed romantic relationship is because I've allowed myself to accept the idea that um, that that person who I care for now is the same person before me which is not true. I mean, I guess the contents or the mind or the personality or the biology, technically, maybe, but quantumly, that's not true because this person only exists in relation to me. Energetically, I've pulled them into my energetic kind of heart field or space. Meaning or point being, I didn't care about someone that I didn't know before I knew them. You know what I'm saying? Just like you wouldn't care about someone that you don't know now to the extent of who they're sleeping with or who they're being monogamous towards because there's no relationship contract. But for some reason or another, my mind has it so that it's predisposed to taking the current person that I'm kind of, that I'm with now and care for now, projecting into the past, but again, I'm not really projecting into the past, I'm, it's a thing that I'm creating with my mind, or that the mind is creating in the moment, projecting or creating this terrible reality of, you know, them being with someone else, or whatever, because, you know, yeah, people have pasts, quote-unquote, or, you know, experiences or memories of having been with other people prior to who they're currently with in relationship. So, but, with that caveat, you have to kind of catch your mind and call bullshit on your own mind to the extent that you only feel bad about thinking or asking or going down that rabbit hole or being triggered because you're projecting this current person that you only know in relationship to yourself as somewhere else with someone else, which isn't real which isn't the present. But we do that because I suppose the story that they've been telling us is that biologically we're only meant for survival. Our emotions and our feelings and our thinking and our brain capacities for the longest time is, always, is only meant for survival and genetic reproduction. So I suppose I'm here to say, you know, scrap that, fuck that, ten of swords. Yep, right. That's like dead ends or completions, things that you can no longer do anything with. Gemini season shout out 2021. Uh, I believe it's June 8th, 2021. Uh, time capsule podcast. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. Very interesting food for thought. And then I, I suppose after that, then it kind of solves the kind of conundrum of ever being triggered again. Because you don't have to be triggered about... Like, for instance, like I was watching something the other day, and one of the comedians said, Oh, everyone loves a kissing slut. So, of course, I'm... for Not of course, but the personality of insecurity within me that I suppose I'm a carrier of has it so I need to ask my significant other if she was a kissing slut as stupid as it sounds um, but what is that like to me that's fascinating because it's almost as if like I suppose that butts up against 
the biological stigma of you not wanting someone who is so easy to give away of affection be, f you know, for the mere fact or fear of, you know, her affection towards you being rendered meaningless. There's something to do with that, with the personality. There's something to do with that energy, with that low vibrational energy. Um, where it's like your biology is trying to secure at all costs that someone is trustworthy. And I suppose that that's a, a modern phenomenon. I mean, we met at the age of 30. So, or I was 31 and she was 33. So there is this kind of caveat of like, hey, where have you been? Like, who are you? Are you, you know, uh, what's your personality type in regards to relationships or hooking up or, you know, you want to know. But I just, you know, the current experience that I've been going through this past 10 months while we're in quarantine, you know, has been one of, well, shit, past fucking... I met her in August 2020, and we moved in together November 2020. Like, three months of knowing each other. Um, which I'm sure plays into all of this, but, you know, we've learned a lot, we've grown a lot, we've figured a lot out. But, um, um, so yeah, it's just like, it's this crazy whirlwind of an, an experience where you're kind of like, in a way, you're free from all being triggered, and I suppose that solves the case of like, oh, you could go and, you know, consume your low vibrational content because there's nothing to be triggered about, and yet, on the kind of practical scape of things, you have to almost in a way... I suppose face what it is that's triggering you and try to get to the heart of it. It's it's this kind of semblance of fear, I think, where like fear gets in past the personality shield because it hasn't quite figured out. And it has to do with like not knowing. You outsource and you know, render outside of yourself this thing that comforts you, which is a knowing of this other person telling you something about who they've been. Uh, you know, in their past prior to you, but it's like, when does that end? When do you get over it? When do you kind of plug that fucking void or that unknown with, you know, confidence, love, trust, respect, faith? I think a lot of it has to do with your, with your relationship to reality and life and who spirit or who you yourself energetically has called into your life. And just to be able to get over it and trust and like, I mean, wouldn't nirvana or happiness or bliss or heaven have to be within? So it's like, wouldn't it be that I could still kind of consume the podcasts that I enjoy? But, you know, not be triggered or not feel bad. You know, like... Yeah, it's this thing where it's like, and I'm I'm also a firm believer that you can, um, kind of exist there in that state of like I'm impenetrable, I'm impregnable, I'm in, uh, I'm you know, insusceptible to those kind of to that free for all of like negative spiritual attacks. Or what have you. You know, it's almost as if you got to arm yourself and like tell yourself, like, yeah, there's going to be things that, you know, that you witness that, that send you into a tizzy. And you're going to witness it and you're going to feel it, but it's going to be okay and you're going to get over it. You know what I'm saying? It's almost as if, like... You don't necessarily want to try to live a life where you're avoiding pain or you're avoiding being triggered. But you want to live a life where you could kind of like, I suppose, express yourself. Or I suppose, have a say in the matter. And maybe that's what this, you know, podcast is about. Is, you know, not being so great with 
some of the things I'm seeing out there. Um, energetically, anyway. But who knows? And even more so, it's like some of the things that I'm feeling in here energetically. So, again, food for thought. So I hope they don't copyright this because of the oceanic waves and shore noises and birds chirping, blades chirping in the background. Uh, yeah. I'm going to try to upload this. Let me know what you guys think. Comment, like, share, follow, reach out for a one-on-one terrible reading. Holler at your boy.